Since we're working with a population model in this case, we can actually look at the true distribution of epsilon. That is, the distribution of individuals around their own groups. Now let me go back to our representation here of Delta, Southwest, and Virgin. And let's look at each of the individual groups in this data. Notice that each individual in each airline is not at the exact mean of the airlines. That is, the people in Delta are varying around the Delta mean, the people in Southwest vary around their mean, and the people in Virgin are varying around their mean. If we want, we can represent these as histograms. I just have them turned sideways here. And notice that within each group, I'll put the group means here, individuals are differing from their group average. That is the distribution of epsilon. That is the distribution of air. Within each group, individuals are differing from their group mean. Let me rotate each of these histograms and let's look at, for each of the group, the distribution of epsilon. Notice right now, we're looking at cost of flight on the x-axis. That is, we're looking at what the actual individuals paid here. But let's recouch this in terms of air specifically. Remember, air is the difference between an individual score and the score of the group they're in. So really, we should center each of these different distributions. And by center, I mean what I'm going to do is for each individual, I'm going to subtract off the group mean. If I do this, we'll have air now as our x-axis, and we can see that air is centered at zero for each group. Notice why this has to be the case. Within any particular group, the mean air will have to be zero. That's just an artifact of subtracting off the mean from every individual. But notice now, we have an idea of the air across these different groups. And we're gonna make an important assumption, an assumption we'll come back to, which is known as homogeneity of variance. We assume that in the population, the distribution of air is not contingent on or depends on which group an individual comes from. That is, we're assuming that in the population, each of these different distributions, the air within each group, is actually the same. But formally, we can actually look at the variance or standard deviation of each of these groups. In fact, in a population, they could be different. When we're actually working with a sample model, we'll have to make an assumption that they're the same. But notice that since we can see the actual population in this case, we could actually see if this homogeneity of variance assumption is actually true. But for now, Notice that this is the distribution of air. This is going to be our benchmark of how variable individuals simply are in the population. And variability here, or air here, again just refers to how spread out people are around their own group mean. So, when we work with these models, we'll actually get an estimate of this air. That is, when we have sample data and we see how spread out people are within each of their different groups, we're going to be able to use that variability to make a guess about the population error. And again, remember, even if we know the population and can see the population, just because we formed a mathematical model doesn't mean that there's no error. It simply means that the error is representing things we haven't measured in this model. And we already saw this. There are plenty of other things that contribute to an individual's score or a cost of flight besides simply what group they're in or what airline they're in. Air is simply the difference between an individual's score and the score that would be predicted for them on the basis of what group they're a member of. Now that we've seen the population model we're seeking to estimate, let's look at how we'll use the sample model to make this estimation and, in doing so, figure out how we can use our inferential process to actually make a guess about that true population model.